Hello everyone, this is Bloodbane here, and we're going to be going over mech engineering tutorial. Um, there's a lot here. So we're going to start with, we have a mech. You got to drag this bugger over here. And you're going to want to put a reactor in. Now this is the big chungus mech. So I'm going to put in the big chungus reactor. Okay. Uh, next, we're going to need a pilot seat or a cabin. Um, this one, you look at the stats, weight is how much that cockpit weighs or a cabin. Uh, control is like how fast you reload and I believe also how fast you recover from a overheated reactor, stuff like that. Safety is how hard it is for the aliens to eat through your mech and chew on your pilot, I believe. <laughs> okay, so let's throw that on. Also, you're going to notice down here that we have uh, weight and energy. What's on the right side is how much you have available, and left is how much you need. Same with energy. Um, so you notice that I need more weight. That's going to be found in my motors. Now there's two distinct different kinds of motors and then each kind has different kinds. There's uh, combustion motors and electric motors. Combustion motors usually weigh less but are not as affected by how much energy you put into them. So uh, there's a bunch of different kinds. I think there's three or four different kinds of each. I'm not worried about that right now. So we're just going to throw electric motors on this guy. And you'll notice that I still don't have enough weight. Now they're electric motors, so they're meant to have more energy funneled in. To funnel more energy into stuff on your mech, you're going to click this little lightning bolt on the bottom left. Then you're going to click this. Oh, I right clicked on accident. You're going to click this little tab open. And you can either drag a plus mark to add five energy, a minus mark to negative five energy, or you can hold shift and then right and left click respectively. So right click is going to add energy, left click is going to take away five energy. I'm just going to max these out. Why not? I have the energy for it anyways. All right, so we have our cockpit, we have our reactor, we have our motors. <coughs> Next, we're going to need our firepower. So we're going to go over to weapons. And I already have a bunch of weapons assembled for the mech. If you want to learn how to put weapons together, there's a tutorial for that already. Um, and then I threw all the weapons on. All right. Most of these weapons are energy weapons. Now, energy weapons like energy. They do more damage if you uh, slam more power onto them. That's, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw extra power onto all these. And then uh, a neat thing is you see how this missile launcher takes five energy? If I negative five energy off from that, it takes three energy to negative five. Okay, so essentially I've reduced the amount of power that that missile launcher takes by two. So instead of taking five energy, now it takes three energy. So now I have more energy available to me. It's not going to matter a whole lot for this guy, but now we got our weapons on. We have our motors on, reactor, cockpit. Now we need to start worrying about the other stuff, like our passive armor, which is 28 right now, which is pretty good. Um, I'll go over how to adjust the armor. Speed, which is also affected by your motors. Um, hit points uh, there are certain auxiliary units you can add to add hit points I believe 
I don't know if I ever actually researched that or not. Um, and then there's max outside temperature. 109 is terrible. So I would recommend looking up heat sinks. Your max temperature is going to go down the more wires you throw everywhere. So because I have all these wires all over the place, my max temperature has plummeted. So I can add some heat sinks to accommodate. I also prefer to have a repair drone on all my max, at least one. Um, it's a big balancing act, but uh, repair drones work really well with armor, and I'm going to get into that next. But you also have your resistances. So you have your heat resistance. This is to like when aliens fall out of the sky and a giant fireball mess and it hits too close. <clears throat> or if, you know, it's just hot outside. That first one might be wrong, but I'm not sure. I think so. Uh, water is like if you're underwater and there's a heavy current going by how much that pushes you around. And then there's wind, which is, you know, if there's tornadoes and fart clouds around, how much that's going to push your mech around. It is what it is. All right. So in here, you have your armor set up. So you can have a bunch of like, you see that this is my zero layer. This is the very bottom layer. I can make this the beefiest thing. I can add it on. And now we're on layer one, right? We can add a few layer ones. I'm not sure exactly how many, but we can add a couple of these as long as we have those layers. And then layer two, which you can add this layer at any point in time but you can't put anything on top of this layer. And this is going to increase your passive armor. What your passive armor does is it makes it harder for the aliens to hurt you. So let's say this guy has a damage of five, okay? It's going to take multiple of these aliens chomping on me at the same time before they start getting through my passive armor and doing damage to my mech. Don't let this deceive you because it doesn't mean that you're safe from all of the damage under 33. There's a certain amount of punishment your passive armor can take before damage starts getting through it. So if one or two of these guys are chewing on you and you have enough passive armor, yeah, you're probably fine. But if you got 50 of these guys chewing on you, you're going to be dead. Um, also, <clears throat> you can give your armor hit points, and that's what this active armor coating is. So this is on a scale of 1 to 100, and they're going to have to chew through that much armor to start damaging your hull. That's important later on. But at first, when you first start playing, you're going to want to keep them off from you. You're not gonna to wanna to be getting eaten alive in the first place. Now, some mechs that have armor, or arms, can have a melee weapon. This mech does not have arms. But that will allow you to hit aliens that are literally on your mech. So, um, if you're getting overwhelmed, that's going to be your only defense if there's not another mech around to shoot them off from you, to get them off from you. Um, and then you have your energy shield. Uh, this protects you against energy weapons, and I believe it stacks with your available energy. I could be wrong on that. Um, but... Uh, the shields of other mechs stack on top of each other so that you can protect other mechs with your energy shield and so on and so forth. So if someone's shooting energy weapons on you, at you, they have to get through all the energy shields that are in the way to hit whatever they're shooting at. 
So, and then you have your ammo ratio. You can change this up. Uh, so you're just adjusting how much ammo you're holding for your different kinds of ammo. So you have uh, your solid ammo or your kinetic ammo, your missiles, and then there's uh, chemical too, but that's not in here because this guy doesn't have any chemical weapons. So other than that, here's your weight distribution. This tells you what everything weighs. Uh, this is overclocking. I don't know how to do this, so I don't. <clears throat> Maybe someone else does. I just don't know. And then you can paint your mech down here. You can also, if you like your design, you can save your design. And then if you have all the same parts and the same mech, you can paste it on that mech. Also, if you want to see how your mech performs in combat, there's this little square next to send that you can click and you can move your mech around with WASD, hold left to fire. You have your temperature gauge here on the left. It tells you how fast you cool off your current temperature and the percentage that your reactor is to overheating. You can change what biome you're in with the slider down here, which will adjust. Um, your the outside temperature I was wrong this bottom one is how hot the outside temperature is regardless and then this little button right here will change whether you're simulating being underwater or not um, and then aside from that this little number next to the exclamation mark is how many engineers it's going to require to send this mech from your engineering bay to your hangar and you're going to double click on the exclamation mark it's going to use those engineers and now your mech is in the hangar anyways that's it for this one i hope it helps um i'm sure i missed some stuff i'm sure i went over some stuff uh, over went over some stuff but it's my basic understanding of how things work. That understanding can be wrong. Anyways, thank you so much, and I hope that helps. Bye, guys.